Uh, I don't care who you are, bad things will happen in your lifetime. Every love story ends in tragedy because somebody's going to go first. Whether they leave somebody or die, it's going to happen. Every pet you love, it's going to end in tragedy. So, I mean, part of having good things is that they come to an end. And, uh, and you know, people lose good jobs. The economy is tough now. A lot of people are having a hard time. It's not so much you're recovering, but you're being determined to go back and find the good stuff. It's, again, not looking backwards. It's not, it's, not how, it's not that you drag yourself up and overcome difficulty, no matter how bad it feels. It's that the worse things get, the more perseverance you get. Determination is one of the most powerful things I teach most of my clients. They, they're not determined enough to, to clean up the inside of their mind and focus on what they want. And uh, I, all the people that I've ever spoken to, and I really interviewed a lot of people that made it through things that should be impossible. Concentration camps in World War II, prisoners of war camps in Vietnam. I mean, just the worst of the worst things, you know, being kidnapped and tortured. Uh, and when I spoke to the people that seemed to have survived these things well, because, you see, to me, I'm not somebody that goes and finds out what went wrong. I'm somebody that studies the people who do things successfully. NLP is the study of successful behaviors. It's the study of people who got over fears. It's not the study of how people get fears. Uh, I leave that to psychologists. They do an excellent job. My job is to find out how people do these things. And when I've discussed it, there were certain things they had. One is a sense of humor. And the other is they kept looking in their mind, thinking about where they wanted to go. Someday I'll be out of this mess, and I'm going to do this. And I deserve it. And in, instead of feeling bad about where they were, even in the worst of circumstances, you take one person who was in, uh, in the camps in World War II, and they are devastated by it, and they live with nightmares, and they never get over it. And the guy who was on the bed next to him got out, got a job, got married, had a great life, has a wonderful sense of humor. And uh, when, I, when I met these you know, Holocaust survivors, and I realized some of them were devastated by it, and some of them uh, you know, be, became impervious to it, uh, when I asked them about you know, what they were doing. Even in the worst of times, prisoners of war in Vietnam, some of the guys that I talked about that were locked up for eight years and beaten regularly, there was nothing. They didn't let them talk to another person. They were in a cell by themselves. So what they did is they went in their brain and they planted a farm. You know, one of them had grown up on a farm and he visualized a field. He in his mind slowly plowed the field, put every seed in, and sat and watched it grow. Even when they were beating him on the feet with cane, he was growing his garden and telling himself, someday I'm going to be out of this and I'm going to plant this field for real. And you see, when you make vivid goals that tell you, you know, no matter how bad it is, it's going to be over, as opposed to saying to yourself, I've lost this and I'll never get it back, it's never going to happen, you know, it's the tone of your internal voice and the clarity of your images about the future instead of blowing the past up and making it big and horrible. All the people I meet that are devastated by bad memories are still looking at them. If I came over to your house and painted an ugly picture on your wall, you'd paint over it, but yet people leave them in their minds year in and year out. What I do is try to teach people to redecorate the inside of their head so it's futuristic and it's a good place to live.